Hello. You are watching an informative video to learn more about an English word. Perfect. P E R F E C T. Perfect. Definitions of perfect. Adjective. Having all the required or desirable elements, qualities, or characteristics as good as it is possible to be. Perfect. What's up, everybody? My name is Liam, and my pronouns are he, him, and his, and I'm here with the fantastic DW. What's good, beautiful people? I am DW. My pronouns are they, them, and theirs. And Liam and I, we've been kicking it since elementary school, and you are listening to What's Perfect Really podcast. On this podcast, we talk about moments in music and the impact that those moments had on our lives, our friendship, and the whole world. And our mission is to bring light to perfect moments. We are perfect moments of music. We think deserve a little more appreciation. And today. What do we have today? We have Carrie Foe. Okay. Uh, and the song is called No Small Talk. Ding, 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 ding. Hold on. We have another tra uh, trial of theme music, and we'll see if this is appropriate for our podcast. Okay. I like this one, Liam. Okay. Right, that might be a keeper. I like that one. <laughs> so, yes, we're bringing it in uh, with Carrie Fowl. No Small Talk, that this was released in 2014, and it was produced by Carrie Foe and Black Party, who is Carrie's producing partner. That, like, they do a lot of work together, primarily, you know, they're separate artists, but they do a lot of work together. But I had to pick it. I mean, when I first heard it, I actually didn't hear it in 2014, I don't think. I heard it on Insecure. And I think it was released as a straight single. It was something that Carrie dropped. And um, actually, I didn't, I didn't even know there was a video for it until I was like, yo, we're, I'm going to do this on the podcast. And then that day when I showed you, and this song is fly, like we got to do it. And I showed it to you. I was like, damn, I didn't even know there's a music video for this. And then I fell in love with the music video. So I, <laughs> I have to talk about the song and the music video. And the music video. And the music, man, it's... There's so much here. There's so much. It's 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 a packed packed you, uh, slate. Uh, have you ever heard of this song before? I introduced you. So I never heard of this song. I never heard of the artist. So it's all brand new to me. Um, how did you hear it on Insecure? Was it organically in the show, or was it featured? You know what I mean. Well, I know. I, I believe it was more organically like one of those scenes. I don't think it was a B-roll scene, but a scene. Mm -hmm. That was happening a transition scene because you know Raphael Sadiq does the soundtrack for for Insecure. It's oh, responsible really? for the music, yeah. So when I heard this, I was thinking to myself, what, "What? Wait, hold on. What's you know? Rewind it real quick. What what song is that? What I can't that? remember the scene. I can't remember the scene that I was associating with, but I remember hearing. I'm like, damn, this is this is fly. And I never heard this song before, but that was in 2016." But the song was in, created in 2014, so so it's been circulating for a minute, and is there's a a remix to it and everything, and I, I, ha I had no idea. But but here here is the a little bit about the landscape though. Okay. I started to so say, was well, what was popping back then? How come I didn't hear this song in 2014? I couldn't have possibly heard it because it I was too busy. Missed you and me. We both missed this song. It yeah, went right I missed past it. us. You know what I was too busy doing? What? I was listening to Iggy Azalea. Oh no. Is that um fancy? Was that the name of the song? Fancy? Yes, I was not listening. I was not listening to Iggy Azalea. I was actually listening to Azalea Banks. Okay. Did you they ever heard of Azalea Banks? Oh, I've definitely heard of Azalea oh, Banks. Oh. oh, they they you know was interesting. Maybe, maybe they did. It's the two Azaleas. I wonder, was that because Azalea Banks was out and then Iggy? Um, same name or something like that. So I think I they both happened. coincidentally had the same name because I remember when Azalea Banks came out, I broke up with a girl and then she was like, hit me up months later, was like, this girl makes me think of you. 
I didn't know how to take that. I didn't know how to process it, but wait, um, what you, so you broke up, you broke up with, with a, with a woman. Yes. And she sent you a song. Correct. Yeah. Wow. Did you, did you, did you dump her or did other way around? It was the other way around. (laughs) That's why I was like, why are you hitting me up? Like, this is big, this is old news. Like, that's vile. That's rubbing it in. Like, you know what? I was was thinking of you. And what what song did did they send? Uh, It was whatever the big song, because she came out like hot. Like, it was was, um, an Iggy song or an Azalea Bank song? No, it was an Azalea Bank song, because I remember specifically. Oh, okay. They sent you a 212 song? Oh man, what was that controversial song she had when she came out? Um, the video was black and white. I forget the name of it, but I, oh. long story short, I just remember Azalea Banks coming out and she was like her own thing. She was like a a f- driving force. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, force. I think Azalea Banks is, was definitely like a tornado. Yeah, it felt it felt like a tornado. Exactly. This yeah. is a super talented person, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah. So so that we we. So all of that was going on. Yeah. And and um the elevator drama happened happened. Oh, is that where um Solange maybe, maybe I could have missed it because of that. I'm not sure. But then Robin Williams and Joan Rivers, they died that year. Oh, that's too bad. And I was just thinking, Robin Williams, so talented, but they both were so talented. Yeah. Um, but I was thinking, where was I? Like what was happening in my life? How come I missed this song? It seems so important for me to for me to to not have missed the song, but I did. With that uh, said, I don't feel like the song has because I know the views on YouTube aren't this tremendously big number. Uh, so it may true. just missed a lot of people because yeah. you know sometimes success isn't about how talented you are or how dope it is. It's just does it get the right you know energy behind it. That's true. But you know what? Before we continue, yeah. what's a perfect moment happened to you since the last time we were on a podcast? Um, so I have a motorcycle and the motorcycle was in my backyard all went mm-hmm. along and um, I didn't do anything to try to take care of it. It was just there. And then we had a nice day today and I pulled it out and it started up and I drove around the whole little like area on my motorcycle. It's really nice. Oh, so I, I thought you were going to say, and then it broke down. No, no, it did not. That's what made it a perfect, <laughs> wonderful moment. It was actually smooth sailing. Okay. Okay. Great. No, that sounds great. You know, I, last time we were on the pod, I keep eating you up about these perfect moments. And then I it was dry. I was dry last time. Yeah. You would just be it's like embarrassing. crickets. It's embarrassing. Yeah, it was embarrassing. So I, I decided to, cause sometimes I'll have the perfect moment and I'm like, Oh, I'll remember. I'll remember. And then I don't. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and write these moments. You have down. to write it down. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna write it down. So that's what I did. So I have, I have a couple perfect moments stored up, but I'm going to go with this one. An email. We received an email. Uh, What's perfect? Really podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. Yes. Okay. We received an email. And, you know, we, we receive we receive quite a few emails. And um, this one was special. And why was it so special? Because the email was from Jean Gray. Wow. I know. I'm not going to go into detail Mm -hmm. too much about it, but the email was a thank you. Let's just go. Let's just say that. And I was so excited. Liam, I I called you. We ain't got to get in all the details of the call. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I called you and said. We're happy. Yeah. Yo, we got an email. <laughs> I thought it was fake. I looked at it three, four times. I was like, what? Nah, this is not real. Nah, this is not real. This couldn't really be happening right now. But uh, apparently, Jean Grey is a listener and appreciates appreciates oh. the work that we're doing. Uh, long story short, uh, what I will do, uh, it was a perfect moment because of all the people, Jean Grey to me is is an outstanding artist, and so it's it it was so it was very affirming for to for someone to email and be like for Jean Grey to email and say, "Keep going, dope." All right. So it was definitely definitely a perfect moment for me. So perfect that next to my degrees, when I hang them up on the wall, I'm gonna <laughs> hang up these email frames. <laughs> that's 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 what I'm talking about for me. That's what it is for me. So I'm 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 excited. I'm excited. Dope. And on our Twitter, Jean Grey got a lot of love. Like 
the people really, you know, the, the phrase on the thing was, does Jean Grey get enough props? And then Twitter was like, definitely not. We need to pump Jean Grey more or, you know, so. Yo, and when, how I really knew it was Jean Grey, because then Jean Grey follows, follows us on Instagram now. That's dope. And I was, this is real. I wasn't imagining it. It's real. It's real. So, uh, shout out to Jean. And I definitely responded to that email. Because why not? Why not? Yeah, Yo, you did. Uh, a, and if we do, go ahead. You did a much better job this week. I did. Your perfect moment, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I was definitely, I was slacking, slacking on it. Yeah. Hard, hard body. All right. So all this stuff is happening in 2014. But the most important thing that's happening in 2014 beside this song is the Ice Bucket Challenge. Oh, wow. I remember that. Right. Did you do the Ice Bucket, bucket Challenge? Do you think I did it? Uh, I don't think you did. I think you're correct. Yeah. I would, I would, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah. So, but, okay. So here's the song. The song is No Small Talk. And it's the ultimate flex to me. The song is the ultimate flex. What it, What is Carrie talking about? Uh, what I'm taking away from it is Carrie saying, look, don't, don't come at me with this chit chat. I'm a boss. I got stuff to do. I got people over here when I need them. Uh, and and I, I I just get I just get this, I get these racks. That's what I'm doing. I'm taking these calls. I ain't got no 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 time for anything else. And the way that it just goes into it, when we talk about the hook, when we talk about the lyrics, we talk about the beat, everything, everything is absolutely perfect. <laughs> that's good. It better be. Yeah, that's the podcast. Okay. Episode episode is over right there. There it is. <laughs> okay, so what what's so dope about it is that when you do, we say a vibe check. Mm -hmm. When you're driving in a car, yep. this is check. When you're at the club, check. Okay. When you're at a house party, check. When you're high in your room by yourself, check. <laughs> it's, I, I had it, a question it, for you that coincidentally fits this right here. I'm going to present three scenarios. And what is the best scenario in which to consume this song? So one of them is after a bad breakup, you know, when you need to like boost yourself back up, like you need to mm -hmm. like gather that inner strength and be like your best self. Um, or is it at a house party? Or mm -hmm. is it driving home after Friday uh, to go home for the weekend from work? Of those three ones, what's the number one best way to consume it? Oh, um, hmm. I think, okay, because of the, the hook, the chorus, for me, I think the best way to consume it is after the breakup. Okay. Because it's, it's a turn up song, but the hook, when we get into the hook, just the way it comes off, the way, ah, it's just so not like, ah, nonchalant. How Carrie could, look, come on, man. I ain't got time for this. It's yo, what I love, why this song is so perfect to me. There's so many different layers to it, plus the video. But why it's so perfect is that I really love when people come off as if I, I really don't care. Like and, and you can hear it in the in the voice and tone, you can hear it in the lyrics. They just look like they're not bothered. And they're chilling. And you could be bothered in the world in any other way, any other time. But in that particular moment, I'm just going to give you these lyrics. I don't care if they're, if they're super high-end lyrics. I'm just giving you what it is. And what I love about this song is just Carrie just goes straight in. Straight in. Like, this is what it yeah. is. This is what I did today. This is what, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is what it is. And when you even get into the video... Is it's it's perfect because it's not one of those hugely dressed up videos. I love videos like this. Uh, it, when you go into, uh, I don't want to say in the art world they would say this, right? Because art world is just <laughs> mad privileged people looking at other people like. Nah. It's like, but when I look at the video, I love videos. Now I find that the more that I'm that I that I'm into art the more I love stuff that's accessible, mm -hmm. you know, and the video's very accessible. Um, so I'm gonna get, so let's just, let's just, let's just pause okay. for a minute. 
because I want to, I want to, I really, I, I really went into a deep dive here. Because what happened is I went to go to listen to small talk. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, hold on, there's a whole bunch of other songs I've not listened to. Okay. From this See? artist. Yes, from this artist. So what I did. And it's Carrie Fow? Foe? It's it's Carrie Foe. At first I thought it was Kari, but it's it's Carrie. Okay. But I had I had to go do I had to go do the dive. You know what I mean? Like I can't be on the, the pod talking all this stuff about this song is great and by by Kari Fox. Meanwhile, you know I mean? when I asked my dad, I think I said <laughs> I, think I said Kari Fox. <laughs> so like I'm asking my dad if he knows who she is. And then meanwhile, I'm saying the name <laughs> wrong. Oh man. You can decide if you want to add that clip in the end. <laughs> it's up to you. So we have to know from. if she's actually famous or not. It needs to be determined <laughs> at the end of each episode. Is the artist famous? Uh, so, okay. So what, okay. This is what I love about Carrie. What I started to learn about their, their personalities. One, they're from Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Carrie's from Arkansas. Started rapping at about 16. And didn't start taking serious until about 19. And then most of the stuff has has you know a pretty big catalog, a lot of mixtapes. Just you know, has been rapping for a minute, and uh, part of the catalog of or of the catalog that I was listening to, there's so many different, so many different albums on there. But what happened for me is that I put it in, I put yeah. it on Spotify, and I just started rolling, just put in the name, and hit after hit after hit after hit it was almost it was it was it was like i want to find an artist with a lot of hits Mm -hmm. it's like you could play it back to back to back to back to back it was like that like you're listening to um say janet jackson back to back to back to back did any of the songs make you feel like maybe i should change my perfect selection to this other song or is this still the one you like no this is still my home base i need to well, there was there were some songs. Okay, I thought about it for a second, but no small talk is very significant. It's very significant. The reason why I love it is is because it's also earlier than some of the other songs. But I don't know. I, I had them on the shuffle a little bit. But mm-hmm. what I love about it is that it's simple. You get to groove to it. You get to ride to it. Like you can catch the lyrics right off the bat. You can have fun to it. You don't have to be uh, on top of it. It's just an easy and an easy groove with it with a with a, a nice a nice little beat, you know, and not little, I don't mean that and little disrespectfully, but just a nice beat, you know, and the way that Carrie goes on it, it, it it's almost like every time I listen to the catalog or this whole day I was spending listening to the catalog, mm-hmm. Carrie knows what she sounds good on. And I think that's such a skill. It's such a deep skill that that people don't have, including myself. Mm. Even if Carrie may sound not as in the pocket on certain places, but Carrie knows what Carrie sounds good on. Carrie's not like Nas, where all of a sudden there's this beat, and you're like, yeah, what the fuck happened? <laughs> Nas, like, my Nas man. Nas is going to come for us. Nas yeah. is going to come for us. Listen, I love Nas, but some of his <laughs> beat selections are terrible. And his voice doesn't fit it, and everything's bad. But okay, and then the other piece, mm. when I was listening to the to the catalog, great, like dope collaborations with people I absolutely love. And you know when people have collaborations, this is what I think, when people have collaborations with people I love, then I know they're dope because those people like you too. It's a cosign. And I, exactly. And I love all the dope people. So it's just like, you know, it mm-hmm. is what it is. You feel me? <laughs> So I was really excited listening to the catalog, listening to the verses and listening to people that I'm like, oh, damn, I, I heard this person, but I never really listened to a verse before. But there were so many collaborations. So that also tell me that this artist is loved by other artists, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah, I saw Childish Gambino is on, like, I guess the remix to this, which yeah. surprised me because, again, I, he's he's a huge star. Everyone knows him. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he hopped on this in a very deliberate way, too, like he was like, I want to be on that song. Yeah, yeah. And you know, here's the the thing too about what I noticed about Carrie as a as a lyrical person. Right. I think I heard Carrie describe the way that she uh she rhymes as alternative rap. What do you think is al- al- what do you think alternative rap is? 
Like, how would you like, describe that? Yeah, I feel like alternative rap is. We talked about this a couple times on the podcast. Hip and hip hop and rap has this like history, and for a long period of time, there was this very strict gatekeeping around it. Like, you mm-hmm. had to be a real MC and ba da 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 da, and like there was you know criteria that you had to meet. And I think as time has gone on, that's fallen away. Some because it's just fallen away as time has eroded the the gatekeepers. Uh, the other part is just the music has expanded and diversified. And I think my guess, someone like Kari Fo, right? Did I say it correct? Kari. Kari Fo. Mm-hmm. Is they feel they're more an artist than they are like a rapper only. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. as a result, you don't want to feel like you're confined to these like checkboxes that old rap guys predominantly tell you you need to satisfy in order to make rap music. So I would assume that's like a freeing uh like label to put on your music so you don't feel like i can listen i'm just gonna do me and that's Mm -hmm. all i care about it's all i'm worried about satisfying yeah you know i think i think that that thought that you're saying right there that's the one i was thinking i was rewinding back to when mumble rap Mm -hmm. would refer to who made up that term mumble rap i don't even know i I believe it came out after the yin yang twins because okay they were mumbling so okay <laughs> that's that's liam's memory but 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 mumble rap there was a moment where it was just that was what was happening yeah for a minute and a lot of people were dogging it like this is this is terrible and if, if for me for me i was thinking to myself i can't really understand what you're saying i i don't know what's happening <laughs> but i you know i think there's also a skill behind everything yeah. right somebody practiced this like is just like t-pain practiced being on what's it called Auto Tune auto-tune right practice that skill and develop that skill you know people could argue there's no skill to mumble rap but i mean it's going i'm gonna have to practice to to learn how to do it so to me if i have to actually practice learn how to do it then then there's something behind it right whatever y'all can come for me i don't care but that's that's what it is to me but when i think about alternative rap and i hear carrie stuff it's so dope to hear somebody feel free Mm -hmm. on the, on, on the work that they're doing. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to do this. Hey, let's collaborate on this. This is the vibe I feel. And when I was, was listening to Carrie speak, I get that it's a vibe and that's what it was. When I was driving, it was a, it was a vibe. It was a whole vibe, every single track. And I love that. I love that about this particular artist. And I was thinking to myself, if I had a chance in my life to to go and just hop on a whole bunch of different tracks, mm-hmm. create all create all this music, I would specifically, being the age that I am, only want to hop on tracks from a certain generation, right? And this would be the generation where I'd be like, "Yo, I hope I hope they give me a call. Anybody like Carrie gives me a call, and then and then Jungle Pussy gives me a call, and." <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, and then all of these people that are, that are just doing it right now, I want to be, I want to be like having these 16 bars and people are like, who's this old person that nobody knows on these tracks? I think that would be the most amazing thing. And I was, I was thinking in the car, I was like, damn, having all, if I had all the money in the world and I had a music project, I would definitely call Carrie Foe and, um, uh home black party okay and be like yo let's do let's I'm do going, like five songs i'm going down to arkansas <laughs> get ready <laughs> this, i'll be like yo let's do, five, yeah. let's do five songs they're in la now oh, but, yeah, LA, okay but, but, but let's let's do five songs i really need y'all to produce this i it's just the sound is amazing i love i love i love i love it so that was my whole experience just riding and 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 having that uh cruising it and there was the other piece that i noticed even though carrie might not be the most like let's say lyrical person there's can moments I, in there can Go i ahead. tell you my experience vibe oh, into yeah, the song? Yeah. okay yeah so i think you were you you hit a point and we, we say this a lot i think regardless of how it is one of the important things is you want to feel like you're hanging out with the artists not being mm-hmm. lectured by the artists and this is definitely a song where you feel like you're just hanging out I don't mm-hmm. feel lectured mm-hmm. to at all. However, I feel like I snuck into Carrie's car and I'm like in the back seat. 
and Carrie is driving around and on speaker, she's talking to somebody and she's explaining how like, basically I'm the shit. These motherfuckers can't fuck with me. And yeah. I'm in the back seat, and like, I don't feel invited to the conversation at all. I feel like I could get kicked out of the car if she turns around and sees me, but I'm enjoying the ride. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel listening to this song. I think that's a, a, a great, a great description. A great description. Because when I listen to the song, it's almost like a, uh, you know, the ludicrous throw them bows. Yeah. And you know when it comes on. Oh, wait, no, no. Move, bitch. Move, bitch. Yeah. And then when that used to come on in the club or whatever, it would just be a whole bunch of dudes pushing each other. And like nobody could be on the dance floor. You know what I mean? It's, it was not an inviting space. But this song gives me that feel mm -hmm. because, bitch, I'm taking calls. Why are you talking to me right now? It almost gives you, it gives you that confidence, that confidence of, you you you're not even on my level i mean i could be i could be in a room and this song comes on and it's like i mean it, hypothetically i wouldn't i wouldn't do this to to patty labelle but like if i'm in a room with patty labelle and this song comes on and then patty's like excuse me sweetheart i'm like bitch I'm, no i'm just kidding i'm just <laughs> kidding i am so kidding <laughs> oh my gosh not at all those two in a in one sentence is so scary i will never ever do that again um but it, but that's how strong the song is, is giving you this. I don't have time for nothing. I'm just going, I'm going to zone out and be in this vibe. Can I? Okay. So I made a couple other notes on how she sounds on this, on this beat. I didn't, I didn't hear her whole catalog. I really just heard this one, mm -hmm. but I made notes as I was listening to it. So one thing I like a lot is this is the opposite of mumble rap in a sense that okay, I can. Hold on. Let, yeah. let me pause you real quick. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, Patty. I really do love you. I just had to do it was on my heart. I just really need to know that that was the strong example I was trying to give Knox how strong it was. Okay, go ahead. You might have gone too far. Yeah. I think I gone I think I went too far. Liam, you're supposed to pull me back. <laughs> yeah. Like why are we you We have let me beef go? with like several celebrities, man. <laughs> Praz is right. just going yeah, Praz and Patty LaBelle just going to meet us both. I know and Patty LaBelle is so amazing. I just feel the auntie slap on the back of my neck already <laughs> like why why would you even do that? But it wasn't, it was, it was a strong example. It got a little too strong though. Okay, back to back to back to Carrie before the hair starts standing up on my neck again. Yeah. So these are my notes on Carrie and and, and how I picked. So opposite of Mumble Rap, she, I can clearly hear everything she says. Her voice like sits perfectly there. She has this Arkansas accent, of course, but the clarity is there. There's no struggle to hear anything she says. And to me, she does this thing where she like drags her voice all over the beat, just like yes. wipes her voice all over the beat oh. like smears her voice all over the beat i was gonna and, talk about that go into it and i like that a lot it's like almost in a disrespectful way <laughs> like she's trying to voice all over the beat and i made some other things like hearing her rap makes me think of like you know when you see like basketball from like the early 90s late 80s when a guy would like grab the rebound and he just throw his elbows around when he's boxing out mm -hmm. that's carrie carrie's like the person who throws elbows when they get a rebound in basketball and Carrie also strikes me like if you invite Carrie over to your house, have you ever seen that? You're in like a, a, a public space, right? And you're just a, a, a silent observer in the room. And then there's someone who's kind of doing their thing and they seem oblivious to how they're impacting the world around them. And they just like knock over vases and the glass gets knocked over <laughs> and they don't skip a beat. They just keep trying. You're like, yo, that person just knocked over a vase and they didn't even fucking notice. That's what Carrie is like. Carrie is like, just yo it just happens and then every like it, the consequences <laughs> to everyone else are their problem your analogy your your analogies are on point so on point because it's everything that i was thinking i was actually going to talk about the way carrie drags out something you know what i mean on the beat there's a patience there and it's 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 one of those things it's it untapped skill to sit on something for so long and let it kind of just and then come in come in on it right right at the at this moment and it could be sound like a, a little off moment but it's but it it falls perfectly and what i noticed about a lot of the songs i was listening to with carrie is that she's so great at really milking the beat allowing to the lyrics to just ride with the beat and, and milk the beat. And I wonder if that's that's an Arkansas thing because there's there's some patience 
that's there. Maybe there's like a, a little bit of the slowness and steadiness of, hey, what's going on? We we could wait. We good. And I wonder <laughs> if that's like, um, and I get that because fishing, you know, fishing, it carries talking about fishing, how that that's, a, you know, there's a lot of patience involved with that. And that's that's a hobby or something that Carrie likes to do. And I was just thinking to myself, it reminds me of fishing. You You go in, you know, you get you get your bait. And you're planning to be out there the entire day. So you get all your equipment and you're just sitting and you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. Then that fish come and, you know, and you, you get into it, you get into it and you could, you could do whatever you want. The fish, you could throw the fish back. You could take it, gut it. But the weight, that's, that's how carry to me is on, is on it. There's the weight and then there's the fish. Boom. And then there's the weight and then there's the, there's whatever's happening. The little, the ruffle in the water. But that, when I listen to the songs, that is consistent, and it sounds so damn good. It's the it's it sounds so delicious. That's the word I want to use. Um, and when we go to no small talk, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what really uh, pulled pulled me to the song is because even when you come into the intro, hello, 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 that's it. Hello, hello. You know, and that to me is just, it's, it's, it's very clever. There's not a lot of weight in the lyrics, so much space. And that is so much confidence. So I'm just like, hello, hello, not let that be right. So I, hello, I, have, hello. I have another question for you. So this, mm -hmm. the other week we did Jean Grey, which was like this lyrical behemoth, like mm -hmm. crazy vocabulary. I would say this is not quite like that. This is perfect for a different reason. I did an uh, analysis of the song, okay? <laughs> Through technology. Wait, wait, of, of this song or of this song? I did, well, oh, I did okay. both because I needed to do a little bit of compare and contrast to, to kind mm -hmm. of put things in perspective. So there's a tool I found where I can take the lyrics to a song and it'll analyze the lyrics. So this entire song, I'm going to give you ever see the prices, right? Yes. yes game yes, show. Yes. So think okay. of it. We're going to do a game like that real quick. Okay. We're doing this. All right, I analyzed the song. Mm -hmm. And it counted all the unique words used in the song. So like the, a, was, uh, girl, any of those things, mm -hmm. every time it was used, it would count it. And obviously if you use the word girl three times, it still counts as one word. So we're talking about the breadth okay. of the vocabulary used within the song. Word. So if I had to ask you the number 75 do you think this has more than 75 unique words or less than 75 unique words used during this song? Do they count? Do they count black vernacular? Yeah, yeah. Each they're, they're exactly, yeah. Well, damn, that's a tough question, but I'm gonna go with less. Okay. So I, I learned a little bit about language here. So it's actually mm. more. There was 107 mm. unique words used through this song. Oh, wow. Out of 404. So basically, but if you compare that to, okay, think of 107. What does that really mean? I don't know. Is that a lot? Is that a little? If you compare that to Gene Gray's song, which was mm -hmm. the opposite approach to like making a rap song, she had 338 words in hers. So more okay. than basically triple this one. Wait, unique words? Unique words. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is definitely, and, and there's a lot of repeated words in this one. Uh -huh. um, but I, I'll, I'll try to do that more. I think that's an interesting way to think about music, like vocabulary yeah. versus just like vibe. And this right, one is definitely right, right. heavy on the vibe. Um, it is, right. With verse, the other one was heavy on the vocabulary. That's, exactly. that's interesting. That's interesting. Um, so the opening yeah. On this is the hello, hello, uh, the beat. Hello, hello, ah, uh, ah, uh, the beat. Hello. You know, it just repeats, repeats. <laughs> yeah. And you don't you don't get tired of it because this is, you know, yeah, I'm on the phone. This is this is what I this is what I do all the time, right? And the open is three cell phones, and I don't ever call them. Mm. Why would I call them? But you know I'm balling, spending money, make it bounce back like spalding. Got a new nigga, and he say he from New Orleans. <laughs> like I'm like, look, ain't wait, wait, and he ain't talking money, nigga. Why the fuck you talking? All my bitches bossy. 
All my diamonds flossy. Rap game sriracha, man, you got, Ben, you know I'm saucy. I got a white dude in Boston. He whipping Audi, right? <laughs> so simple. So simple. But the vibe is so, the vibe is so strong. And you go into the chorus. Bitch, I'm taking calls. No small talk. Right? It's the little, the, the drip in the back. Hello, hello. That's the still, that's what happened in the back, right? Yeah. It's just so simple, but it vibes. It vibes flossy, saucy. You know, you're finding those moments. It's it's nothing. There's nothing. There's there's nothing about it that's super flashy. But when you think about the twist on it, New Orleans. Why the fuck you talking, New Orleans? Right? Those those little moments of of uh, nuance. I that love character. that. I love when yeah. an artist takes two words that don't rhyme, but the way they deliver them, they rhyme perfectly. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. that's a really mm-hmm. cool thing that uh, we talked about it again. Call back to a previous episode when JD Kiss did it with ambulance and Timberlands. They don't rhyme, mm-hmm. but he made them rhyme in this perfect way. And I think the carry does that a lot in the song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think it's I think even even you get a little bit of the southern the southern let me call it southern draw on it. You can hear the way the way it just it just forms so nicely on the beat. Mm. I'm just thinking of, I'm thinking of like, damn, it's it's just so delicious. I can't describe it. <laughs> I can't describe it any other way. But when you hear the song, it's the way that the words just wrap around, wrap around this beat, you know, so simple, not very complex, stream right through your ears. Like I get it. First time I hear it, play that shit again. Mm-hmm. Let's, 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 let's play it again. Now, even if you go to um, the video, did you watch the video? I definitely watched the video. The video is dope. <laughs> what did you like about the video? So the intro is really cool. If you listen to the song on Spotify, it doesn't have this like video intro, mm-hmm. but the video has, I think it's like a movie clip or something. I'm not quite sure what it is, mm-hmm. but it's this lady who who can't be bothered by anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I'm not going to do it justice if I try to recreate it, but the intro is fantastic. But then the video is just like this 90s home camcorder vibe. Yes. But they do a perfect job of it. It's really, really good. But it's like it's so dope because there's these first you got this these head on these um straight straight on shots mm-hmm. right and some of them are from descending like there's this uh what is it called when you're you're looking inferior so the camera's tilted down and it's like you're looking up at them yep. and I love that it's like a power move where you just three people sitting at the table this gives me like the city girls the city girls feel um I forgot what that song is uh. But the, the City Girls song, and they're just chilling. And they're like, yo, I'm just counting money, counting money. And it's so interesting because when I see it in an average rap video, it's it's very boring to me. You know, money or phones or whatever. But everybody's got a phone in this video. And, you know, one of the, one of the, the scenes in the video is them sitting on the couch with phones yeah. at a coffee table. Just a classic a classic kind of video scene. And I think when you have this 90s kind of fit, it's, it's, it's what we say campy. I'll describe it as campy as uh, people would say, oh, it's kind of low budget, you know, but it but it works, that yeah. kind of thing. They're sitting there, you know, the homies are just sitting like, bitch, I'm taking calls at the table, have some drinks there. Mm-hmm. And what takes me, what completely takes me, okay, then you have the roof scene, everybody's taking calls on the roof. It's bopping. <laughs> Just pop it to it. Now, did, did you see the framing? The framing of the video is flossy and bossy on each side and pink. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. This is like Yo, bright colors. That to me is just, it's icing. It's icing on the cake, right? So people are taking these calls. But what gets me is it looks like they rented a hotel or yeah. a motel. They rented a motel and they went to the motel pool. And it's all the it. locations you can go to. <laughs> the garage. The roof. Right. Let's go to the motel roof. Um, the motel, the room where the coffee table is. Let's go to the motel pool. And there's three chairs. Oh, yeah. And I think they, they do a shot outside the motel, like in the parking lot somewhere. Yeah. But there's a shot in the pool. And she she carries like, make it bounce, make it bounce, like Spalding. And anybody who's in that video, and I'm, I'm assuming it's her homies that were in the video at the coffee table, they're just twerking. 
Yeah. They're just twerking. And it's it's the best thing ever. Twerking in some chairs by a pool, by a motel pool. And to me, the aesthetic is the best. It's the best. It's just like, yo, we just gonna twerk. Just catch us twerking here for about a minute. And then you get all these different angles of the twerk. And it's not one of those things of like zoom in on the ass cheek. You know, it's it's I don't get that kind of uh commercial feel. It's more of like just catch us in our moment. Yeah. Like we vibing, we taking calls, and like ah, 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 get it, get it, get it, get it. Yes. And they're just <laughs> chilling, cheering each other on. You know, that's the kind of vibe that the video gets. Like everybody's taking call, everybody's a boss out here. And it's simple. And the, the video takes it, takes it over for me. It's like this this simple, campy kind of video mm-hmm. with these these simple but complex lyrics over this simple just vibe beat with a vibe and and when you put all those pieces together it makes it a classic for me like a classic perfect ass song where you just you get to chill lay back and let let quality tone just play out in your ears dope so the chorus again we're talking very very simple um I thought about other simple choruses and I'm going to ask you, does it fit in? Is it above? Is it below? So the first one I'm going to say, obviously, is the one we're talking about right now. Carrie Foe. Mm-hmm. Bitch, I'm taking calls. No small talk <laughs> over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Another one that I can remember that is this repetitive chorus would be, remember the guy Mims? This is why I'm hot. This is this why is I'm why hot. I'm hot. This is why 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 I'm hot. Okay. Well, that's another I'm repetitive you one fly. I think of. You yeah. ain't because you're not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the Migos. Remember, I don't know if you heard the song. Walk it like I talk it. Walk it like I talk it. Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. So if you had to do a hierarchy of these songs, best chorus, the worst chorus, how would you structure it? Mm. Do you have a favorite? Um, I think I like the Mims one. Oh wow! Yeah, the like the, carries a close second, right? But this is okay. This is why I like the Mims one is because what is it? I'm hot because I'm fly. You ain't because <laughs> you you're not. not. <laughs> because of that line right there, and it's like just that, and it, that that's what gives the edge. But this bitch, I'm taking calls. No small talk. That that right there is just it's so direct, and that's what I even get when you look at a carry uh, when you listen to a Carrie Fo interview. Just directness, like why well, I gotta lie about anything? Let's just be truthful. And what I actually love about when you get to know this artist, they just seem. You, what's the generation, Generation Z? What's the generation that every every baby boomer complains complains about? Uh, baby boomers, I think it's Generation Z and young millennials. And young millennials, right. Yeah. Why do baby boomers complain about that generation? Because they are terrible. Um, <laughs> I wish I had a better answer for you than that. <laughs> terrible in what way, though? Okay, you're going to get me started here. All right. <laughs> this is, okay. All right. There were so many policies put in place to help people in the baby in the baby boomer generation. Mm-hmm. college, loans, how they incorporated the, the, the social dynamic to help lift everybody up. And it's almost like the baby boomers got it. And then they were like, nah, no, none for no one else. <laughs> <laughs> millennials, Gen Z, nah, we we're going to keep this. And this is why you have this housing crisis where like millennials, Gen Z, they can't buy homes anymore, but baby boomers got all the homes. All the vacation houses, right? Yes, they got so- four homes. We're going in on the baby boomers right uh, now. Yeah. But so here's some of the things that I get from from baby boomers. I don't right? think I answered your question at all. I'm sorry. No, you didn't. I was I was raised, I was raised mostly by a baby boomer. Mm-hmm. And the idea of like um we have these things, and this is mostly white middle class. We have these things and we have these houses, and you actually got paid a decent salary. You know, some of the salaries you got paid in the baby boomer era people still get paid now and then they have more loans with all this interest right whatever so the most common thing that i hear with baby boomers versus this generation is that 
they complain too much or they don't they don't they don't want to do anything they quit all the time they're lazy they're late yeah they're lazy so this song is perfect for that and let me tell you why is because it's a perfect example of a misinterpretation of a person because here's this person making all this music doing all this great stuff but I can look at a, a baby boomer who would look at that and be like, you're just making music. You're just doing this thing. You can't keep a job, that kind of thing. But the bitch I'm taking calls, no small talk is the, it's basically the idea that I walk away with. I think it's Gen Z all the time is that, yes, there's so many things that I can do in life. And there's so many paths that other people have paved for me. But what about my quality of life? And when I get the most, when I hear the baby boomers, it's like, you just do what you got to do. That's how we live. That's, that's what it was. And don't get me wrong. A lot of people, you know, if I'm looking at queer people from the baby boomer, if they didn't exist, I wouldn't exist. Right. But it doesn't mean we have to exist. I have to exist on the same path that you existed. Right. You built your path so that I could, I could, I could like race over it. And I think the non-acceptance of the fact that the younger generation is like, yo, get get your shit together. How do you how can you not acknowledge a person in their identity, in their gender? Like this is basic stuff. You know, they're looking at us like this is basic stuff. And they're being insulted for wanting to have be taken care of themselves. And so I think baby boomers, this idea that the generation is so awry. But then when I look and, and think about bitch, I'm taking calls, no small talk. How are they awry when they're taking care of themselves? And they're taking calls, no small talk, chilling on a beat with their homies, creating their own pathways to life because they have they see opportunities differently. I think it's just different. Um, and so when I when I listen to this song, it's almost like a reminder to me of how free Gen Z is in certain ways and how that's inspiring. Can I um, button up my analogy on the generations? Do it. Okay. The greatest generation, this is the World War II generation. Great grandparents, great, great grandparents. Imagine they built this beautiful tree house, right? Beautiful. They're up in a tree house. This shit is dope. You are like, you know what? This shit is so dope. We're going to make a rope ladder for our kids so they can also climb up into this tree house and join us in this wonderful experience. That's the baby boomers. Baby boomers climb up that rope. They're in the tree house. They're like, this shit is dope too. But you know what? We're going to pull this ladder up and fuck all y'all down there. <laughs> you ain't coming up in our treehouse. That's how I feel. Yo, the, that's the that's the thing. You know, when I when I would go to work, when I would go to work, it, lo- it would literally, like, I would walk by and it's like they were pulling up ladders. Everywhere. <laughs> like, no Everybody ladder was you. pulling up ladders. Figure it out for yourself. You think you're some hot shot. You're too cool for us. <laughs> like, you know, and there was this, this work gap where it was 50 or 60 year olds. And then there'd be like, a sprinkle of 30 and 25 year olds, right? And so all the 50 or 60 year olds would be like, 25 year olds do like me. Ah, And if you don't do it, then it's a problem, right? I'm I'm reporting you to HR. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And it's like, damn, yo. Like, but I also think you're not happy. Here we are. Because you're (laughs) not happy, you're pulling up ladders when you could be easily just throwing us, throwing us with the the life jackets. It's all good. That was that was the it, clearly we we have some some stuff with the baby boomers. Yeah, I'm harboring some <laughs> some negative feelings. So, did you go into the YouTube comments? I did. Let me make a couple. So, I have a question. Mm-hmm. I agree with you, and and when I listen to the song, I, I like the song a lot. I don't know if I put it at perfect. I'm it's new to me, so I'm marinating on it. But I think mm-hmm. it will become perfect. Right. Especially the video makes it really dope. I agree with your assessment of the song. However, I think that it can be heard different ways depending on how you want to hear it. And I'm curious if you think that, can you understand someone hearing it and feeling like it's either, so there's some language that she uses. And this may be problematic what I'm about to say. Is at at all could be mistaken for like prostitution. So I'm going to give an example Mm -hmm. back in the old days when I was a single guy and I was on like dating apps, sometimes Mm -hmm. you will come across someone's profile and they would use this language like 
I'm taking calls, no small talk, all about money. And this was like code for mm -hmm. prostitution. Mm -hmm. um, now, I wonder, because I, I, I get the vibe and hearing you talk about her, that she's a very smart artist and she's thoughtful. And this isn't, mm -hmm. it's not accidental. I do think sometimes artists know that they're going to say something that can be interpreted different ways. And they want it in that kind of like edgy mm -hmm. space where people could hear it. And it's, it's like, it doesn't sound safe. It doesn't sound, um, it, it sounds like, did she just say what I think she said? And then it forces mm -hmm. you to listen deeper into the song. And when I listen to the whole thing, I can hear that this can be heard both ways, but I, I choose to hear it as a more like, I'm a boss, I'm about my business and fuck everybody else. Mm -hmm. Versus a more, I don't know if you want to call it sinister, but whatever. Did you hear that at all when you heard the song or is that just me? I didn't hear it because I think I was so set on, ooh, this is this is the thing, you know, and in the context in which I heard it. Mm -hmm. But I want to back up a little bit when we talk about sex work. Yep. When you talk about prostitution and stuff like that, that's a boss move, right? And I think sex work has been frowned upon, but to have uh, in certain ways, I th there's much, much complexity to that. But, you know, I had a true story, a conversation with a sex worker. Um, we had a long, detailed conversation. It was the first time I had a conversation just chilling and they were like, yo, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. There's prominent people that I engage with, you know, and, and, you know, they love, do, it's a liberating experience for them. And I think there's many ways, like, where we talk about sex work, where people are always like, no, don't do, don't be a stripper, don't do this, don't do that. And I think the idea that we're so afraid of what our sexual liberation could look like, right, we, we always create, take something that is sexually, can be sexually liberating, and we do our best to make sure people think that it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh, based off the own, maybe we have our own shame around that. But I wanted to back up. So even if it was about prostitution, when I think about the story in the the conversation I had uh, with this particular sex worker, she was a boss, you know, and the way that she handled was telling me the ins and outs. Of, I, I think I think she was trying to recruit me because <laughs> <laughs> we're hiring. She was like, "Yo, they would love you. They would." It's like these look. Look, in the prominent, the prominent um, white politicians, right? Ah. For for some reason, well, not for some reason. This is no mistake. You know, black femmes are just, you know, they're everything for for white for white men because it's been historic. But I definitely think she was trying to recruit me. But she was getting she was getting money, and and it felt like it was. I was like, yeah, you know, that's not my thing. Mm -hmm. But but I can appreciate the stories that you tell, and I'm here for it. You know what I mean? So even if we're talking about sex work in that way, that's a boss ass thing to be doing to be, I'm going to make, I could make 10 G's mm -hmm. right now and not have to be a slave to capitalism in this way. Yeah. But I could do, I could do it like this. And this is something that feels liberating for me and it feels safe for me. Right. And there's so many different ways to do that. I'm not going to get into all, to de all the details, but just to kind of highlight the fact that this could be something that's terrible. But then even when you say it, that makes that makes if it could mean that that makes it dope too yeah i just i feel like there was some intentionality there to make a blurred line mm -hmm. to make it more edgy which i and again i think it's dope and you're right sex work is a whole conversation that i think is very interesting and i think the pandemic happened this thing called only fans right mm -hmm. and then like technology finally empowered women to be able to dramatically profit off of this objectification of their bodies and then men got mad. <laughs> they were like, no, you can't make money like that. You can't come rich from this. This is that means you're trashy, right. but now you're rich. Oh, what do I do? Ah, I'm also subscribing. No. <laughs> yeah, because you know, like, but also think about it. When you put femmes and women in a box and say you can only do this, you can only do this, you can only do this. And then all of a sudden this avenue opens up and they're like, fuck what you trying to say. You know, I'm about to make my own money it breaks down a system that was like a sure, sure fit for those who were benefiting from it. And now what OnlyFans did, it exploded this, this kind of fourth wall, breaking down a system that, that was dead set on making sure everybody was buried except for the people on top. It took out the middlemen. 
literally exactly. the middlemen, you know, who were right, who their, were uh, navigating all these different pieces. Yeah. So, yeah, OnlyFans is definitely there were like some historic numbers on there. Yeah, uh, it, things it, happen. Is it possible that it could be a bit of reverse misogyny on this song, or do you not feel like that? Misogyny to me is like racism. Someone could say to me, you're a reverse racist. And I would say to them, go read a book. <laughs> There's no such thing, right? I think we can enact as much as we would like in the demoralization of or have the perceived demoralization of men. But we live in a structure that supports and uplifts uh, patriarchal uh anything that has to do with maleness and cisness and heterosexuality. So when you think about structures, the structures and the way that that's, that's fit, there's no way that it could be a reverse anything because there's no equivalent power in order to, to enact the misogyny that's there. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I think when I hear songs like this, where you have a woman kind of empowering herself. And part of the uh, what happens in the song is she kind of dismisses the value that the the power that men have over her, where she's like, I'm in control of this relationship. And I just whew, mm -hmm. whisk you aside if I need to, to replace you with this other thing. There, there, there seems to be an ability that women, maybe because there's just much smaller sample size, but they seem to be able to do a better job of you can look at these songs in two ways. One is like empowering yourself for the, you know, the sheer ability to empower yourself or empowering yourself by pushing someone else down. Mm -hmm. And the women ones, and I just think of like Megan, um, Megan Thee Stallion, similar kind of thing where you could hear it in a way that makes you feel like, oh, well, that's, that's not right. She's saying bad. But it, I think when I hear it, I feel more like she's empowering herself where there's a lot of like, macho dude songs that we all can there's a bazillion of them mm -hmm. where it's more just like killing women you know mm -hmm. it's more you know the the thing when you listen to even the songs that we're reviewing i'm like oh damn this this song is dope maybe i should review it and it's done by a male identified person most often most often a, a cis man like someone who's born in the male body identifies with being a man their entire life they're often at the top of the food chain. So every, from there, and this is, you can, you know, say or add to this because this is, this is your position. It's almost like you're, because you, you're at the top of the food chain, everything is in, is, is significant because of you. You are the center of everything. So when you listen to those songs by those particular male identified people, it's always centering their bravado, their machismo, their toxicity, their, their everything. When you listen to the song, it's, I'm telling you, every song is going to be what you're going to do to me or what you're going to do for me. And when you listen to women and femmes and those who have been subjugated or marginalized, most often those songs are how I'm going to liberate myself of this person or that uh, that person who's always two or four or this scenario but it's more focused on a liberatory process um and it's, it's a very different listening experience right it's not a comparison but i also think being in the body of someone who directly benefits from this society like male cis whatever it's also the pressure of continuing that and 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 succumbing to that pressure over and over and over again and having to make a conscious decision to not do that but you, from my perspective it's 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 kind of this egregious thing where it's 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 so often that you you get used to it you get numb to it if that if that makes yeah, make any I, sense so to piggyback a little bit on what you're saying what made me upset about this song a bit is so I asked you earlier, what's the best way to consume this song? Like after work, mm -hmm. at a party, or like post breakup when you want to like really get in your mm -hmm. own like I'm the shit to, to mm -hmm. reconfidence yourself. To me, that's how I would listen to it. If I had a bad breakup and I needed to like get my my groove back, okay. <laughs> yeah. This song, that's how I'd want to hear this song. And I'm a little upset because I feel like 
there aren't enough like male songs that make me feel like I'm the shit. Like just because mm-hmm. I'm so dope and like I can just to the side, you're gone, mm-hmm. replaced. Um, without it making it more about trashing my ex versus like empowering mm-hmm. my new single self. Does that make sense? Yes. And I, I just wish that men had more songs like that. And it's a very like I think it's very nuanced and it's, it's tough to put your finger on exactly what's happening. But um, I, I am a little sad that men don't have enough songs like that. We'll think about it. Think about this. Mm-hmm. Most men in this category spend their lives trying to impress or trying to be something, trying to achieve, uh, trying to attain power. Um, and when you're doing all those things, when do you pay attention to your self-development? Like, what, what do I love? What do I care about? What sets me free? What, um, what do I enjoy? So much so that you talk about when you ride in cars, some music is embarrassing for you. Oh, totally. Yeah. It's shameful. But it's, it's shameful to you. <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about, self-development. Yeah. Getting an opportunity to be like, yo, I love myself so much that I don't care what anybody thinks. And so when you get, when you're, I think there's a, a kind of uh, a being having all these intersectionalities and being marginalized in the world. So me having all these different identities, it forces me to have to go inward because so many people don't appreciate me. I have to find my own liberation within myself. And that's what you hear in the music. When you hear a lot of people who have the intersections that I have, it feels really liberated because we have to go to these deep places to find spaces of love and joy and tenderness because nobody else is giving it to us. A lot of people are tolerating us. And that's the example of like, when I say black, black people are not homophobic. They'll be like, yo, I'm not like, yo, I, yeah, yeah. I ain't got no problem with, 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 uh, I ain't got no problem with, you know, gay people or whatever, but just don't do that gay shit around me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have no problem with, you saying you're gay, but don't do no gay shit. And that's 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 literally how you live your life. Mm-hmm. Where you're around people, especially like I know when I'm around black folks, uh, people that I know, you can be gay, but don't do that. Don't, there's a fine line. Don't be doing that shit around here. You know what I mean? And then people get violent real quick. But you have to create your own process in order to do that. And I think that's what you hear in the music of... I'm just about liberating myself rather than thinking about anybody else. And and men are often taught to take power over. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. And I, I think it highlights just the point. I think it's a very, like, the line between empowering yourself and putting others down is very, 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 very thin. And I think this song is to some degree intentionally messy but still comes out on the side of empowering yourself where Mm -hmm. i just wish that men had this like i don't i don't feel we have enough of those songs but i'll Um, listen to this until i find maybe this is the right song for me yeah uh, blasting blasting in your speakers without turning it down yeah i feel i I don't i'm (laughs) down to do this one this one i think is dope i think let me know how it goes record record yourself record the record record the people around you i will (laughs) Who the fuck is that? Yeah. Okay, all right. YouTube comments. So, oh, excuse me, right? That's what we're going to. YouTube comments. Yeah, right? yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um, YouTube comment. There's a bunch of them. A lot of them are like, yo, why isn't this a bigger song? Yo, this is my shit. I wish she was famous. Da, 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 da. That's like the majority mm-hmm. of the YouTube comments are just how dope the song is versus why does it not become more famous? Uh, but the one that stood out to me is it just says, Drake wanted to be on a remix and she turned him down. Ha ha. <laughs> I think that's true. I was going to say, is it true? I think it is. I mean, it sounds like the type of song Drake would want to be on. Yeah. But she seems like the kind of artist (laughs) that would be like, Drake, I'm not fucking with you like that. I like, um, what's his name? Donald Glover. uh, Childish. I mean, I totally get it. It it makes me appreciate Carrie so much more. So much more. Because you know what? What that would have been. And I think even, um, I didn't listen to Childish Gambino's verse, but it becomes when you put 
when you put um, a man on the song like Drake, it's going to become exactly what you said. There, I've never heard Drake. I've never heard Drake approach a song in which it's not power over something, over a woman or something else. We answered the question. So actually, <laughs> when I listened to the Childish Gamb- Gambino version, I think he successfully does what I was talking about, where he's like mm-hmm. the dude and he's bigging himself up. And at the same time, there's this whole messiness between like putting down the girl and bigging himself up. But I think he does it in a way that's more about lifting him up than it is about just trashing the uh, your romantic mm-hmm. partners. Where you're mm-hmm. right, I, I don't know how successful Drake is is at that. Yeah, I don't know. I've I've, I've got to go back. I haven't listened to the verse, giving it enough spins by Childish Gambino to to be able to actively contribute. He does his thing. I still like the original better, but Childish Gambino mm-hmm. does justice to the song. Word, word. Um, I have some questions for you. Okay, go ahead. Are you ready? I am. Okay. So, Carrie used to work at a Chick Fil A. Now, answer this very carefully. Sure. Is it going to be Chick Fil A for you or Popeyes? So, I had a weird experience with Chick Fil A. So, Chick Fil A is not in the Northeast that much. So, like, I would hear hear about it, but I didn't experience it. Everyone was like, "Yo, this is the most amazing chicken place ever." And then I heard they don't like gay people. So I was like, oh, fuck. All right. I guess I can't have this because I'm trying to support gay people. And I just think it's fucked up. They're like, why would a chicken place like have a political stance on like <laughs> gay people? But all right. So I was like, I'm not going to do it. And then one time I was with a gay friend and they were like, no, nah, that shit is dope. Just eat it. I fucking eat that shit all the time. So then I ate Chick-fil-A. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually, I don't get it like everyone else does. I'm a Popeye's person. I really like Popeye's. Was that your question? Which chicken place is the best? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Popeye's is the best chicken. <laughs> That's a great, great decision. Great decision. Okay. I've never had Chick Fil A in my life, a day in my life. Is it because of their political stance? Yes. Okay. And also, there's Popeyes. <laughs> yeah, Popeyes <laughs> is like amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so this is a question for all the white people in the world. Are you ready? I can answer for all of us. Yes. Okay. I was th- I was con- feeling confident that you could. Um. So this one is going to be, it's going to be a little tricky. All right. I'm going to have to, since we're on the Zoom, I'm going to put it in the chat Uh because I'm going to need you to read something because if I say it out loud, it's going to be too much of a clue. Okay. Okay. So during an interview that uh, Carrie has with a white interviewer, Mm. I know they're white because they tried to pronounce a word uh, that is in African-American vernacular. I just call black vernacular. And they do a terrible job at it. And they laugh at themselves, which is which is interesting. But Carrie's kind of like, well. Ah. Uh, so for all white people, I want to determine if white people really have, they struggle with the 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 moment right. in their language. Because that that it, that has a history in blackness, right? The way that that, that we pronounce that particular word. Like, so I have a couple of <laughs> I feel I like I'm taking a black SAT. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple of phrases for you, and okay. I want to hear you say them. All right. And I'm going to classify, because this is for all white people, if this is true. Because, you know, appropriation gets so heavy. And when this is the one thing, when white people try to appropriate it, it sounds like exactly what you're doing. I got so us, white people. Let's <laughs> see if all white people. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, <laughs> let's see if all white people can get through this. Because if you don't, it's going to be over. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start with something simple. At least what I think is simple, but yeah, that may be a lot of pressure. Michael. And I want you to pronounce this. Okay. So I think this is complicated. So I, <laughs> what's on the screen, I'm going to give uh, several different answers is 50 cent. I'm sure the artist 50 cent. Mm-hmm. So I have a strong opinion on this because I remember when 50 cent rose to promise. I actually met 50 cent when 50 cent was a, um, up and coming artist before he got shot. Um, not that we were pals or anything like that, but I like shook his hand. Mm-hmm. So there's 50 cent and then there's 50 cent. However, I don't believe 50 cent ever wanted to be called 50 cent. I think that's what like pop white culture labeled him as once he became famous. But so I guess, I guess I'm supposed to say 50 cent, but I, I, I prefer to call him 50 cent. Oh, well, okay. Here we go. Okay. Here's the next one. This one's this, a lot of white people stumble over this one too. Okay. 
I don't want an explanation. I want you to look at them. <laughs> I want you to look at it. I see how you try to get yourself out of it. I want you to look at it uh-huh. and I want you to say it out loud. Don't be trying to give me all this extra shit. I met this person. Oh, I actually did that. Yeah. I don't care. Do do this. Say say it. Okay. Bring in the noise, bring in the funk. Okay. Here's the last one. Okay. I'm a, I'm gonna come I'm gonna come after. For all white people. Yeah. <laughs> 40 miles per hour. That was not so bad. That wasn't so bad. Okay. One for three. <laughs> Because the thing is, if you ever heard, if you ever heard white people try to do the duh, uh-huh. it always sounds terrible. Where, where is the duh in 40 miles per hour? 40, 40. 40. Like, but that's to me with New York. But okay. So the, the interviewer, the interviewer was like, you know, 40 miles per hour. And that was the name of one of the tracks, but it was, but it's 40, 40 miles per hour. Mm-hmm. But the duh, the, 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 that duh is natural in the black vernacular tongue. So we uh-huh. say that often because it's a part of like our lineage, right? So when we say duh, 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 like duh, duh, oh, them over, um, all of them over there, you know what I mean? That's natural to us, but uh-huh. it's something that most white people try to pick up on as if it's part of their vernacular, but it's not. I and see. so it always sounds so strange when white people try to say something that's supposed to be like fitty. Got it. You know, so this is like when you try to learn Spanish when you're like 48. And it's exactly. Like, Hola, exactly. biblioteca. Yeah, I got you. All yeah. Right. So what I would say with this is true. White people should stop trying to do the duh. Definitely think, on fiddy. <laughs> Please, I no think, one should I say fiddy, son. I think you gave me mixed reviews on that one. Because even when you did the fiddy was the, the one. The fiddy was the one. And you were like, I think white people try to say fiddy, but it's 50. <laughs> I don't know, Liam. All right, last question. Carrie likes to fish and play with Legos. Carrie invites you to chill. Which which activity do you choose and why? Legos, gang, gang, gang. <laughs> As the immortal D thing would say, gang, gang, gang. No, I mean, um, I fished a couple times in my life, and I never caught a single fish. Just sat there looking like an idiot. But Legos, I love Legos. By by far, I would have chosen the Legos too. By far. Even though I love fishing, I, you know, the cancer in me is like, I'm down to be quiet in the lake. Legos just seem so much more interactive in a yeah. way where you just get to chill with somebody and imagine a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. So I'm with it. I'm with it. All right. I know you have the, your, your dad. Yeah. Do you think my dad knows who uh, Kari Fa <laughs> Harry foe is. I think, okay, so I think this is, be, it might become obsolete because we're going into deep cuts and I don't think your dad is going to know any of these deep cuts. And what I mean, what I mean by that is stuff that's not super, super popular, mm-hmm. right? Or we would say white famous. Yeah. So I don't think because you pronounce Carrie's name wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Number one. The, I don't this even is know definitely, is. This is definitely a no. Okay. I'm going to play the uh, evidence from the phone. Do you know an artist by the name of Carrie Fox? I do not. <laughs> so yeah, even I couldn't pronounce it right. So dad, don't feel bad. Yeah, you know, it's so funny in an interview. Carrie was like, "I don't understand why people say Fox. It's F A U X. How you get Fox from that?" <laughs> yeah. I don't... No, I think I don't even remember what I said. I could have said. Yeah, Fox. I have no idea. Yeah, it just you know something. Like I think you French, and I was like, ooh. That looks scary. Yeah, you know, it's it it's uh when you get like like uh into the French words where you don't in there because I don't know French like that, but <laughs> the spellings of the words, right? I could see how you know how they say like faux fur. Yeah, yeah. Which is the go, same faux. thing as the faux, I think it's F-A-U-X. So it is a thing to confuse, but but and, and I definitely did it too. I, I did the Kari. I did the Kari, but carry faux. Uh, what's your singular most fantastical moment? Um, I like, well, I just like the beat a lot. I think the beat is super dope. Um, it's got, it's, so it's a trap beat. 
it's kind of like a bouncy trap beat. And, um, you know, to educate the audience, those those that know already know, but those that don't, a lot of like traditional rap music is between like 88 to 98 BPM. That's the speed at which you nod your head to it. Uh, trap music, what makes it so distinct and so different, quote unquote, than like normal rap music and why a lot of East Coast rappers are terrible at doing trap is because trap is slowed down dramatically compared to East Coast music, where a trap BPM is actually around 70, which is dramatically less than East Coast. However, when you're listening to it, vibing to it in the car, you're bouncing to it at double the BPM. So even though it's slowed mm -hmm. down to 70 BPM, it feels like it's 140. And it's like a when you listen to this kind of beat, your body becomes involved, not just your head and not in your head. Your whole body gets like a thing going. So I like the beat a lot. And I think I like how she drags her voice. I didn't really answer the question. I, could, but I just like how she drags her voice all over this very simple but dope beat. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm going to do fantastical moment from the video and from the lyrics. The lyrics. Bitch, I'm taking calls. No small talk. That's the line right there for me. Um, the video. Twerking by the pool. <laughs> <laughs> In the particular, the close-up shots, twerking by the pool. That to me is is everything. It's everything. So if y'all had oh wait, 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 where can we hear the song? Where can we hear the song? So this song's on YouTube. We'll include the link for that. And again, she's on the streaming services. So even though I didn't yeah. know who she was till about this, she's an established present artist that you can find uh, material, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, all that stuff. Yeah. I believe also on the season one Insecure soundtrack, you'll find this as well. Uh, and also, if you have a story or a moment you want to share about this song with us, email us at what's perfect, really podcast at gmail.com. And as always, we invite you. Oh, hold up. Let me back up because uh -oh. there's Instagram. There's Instagram. I want y'all to, you can hit us up on Instagram as well. You can tag us with a story. You know, you hear this song, you want to tag us, you got a clip. Do all the things at What's Perfect Really Podcast on IG. And as always, we invite you to take what you want and leave what you don't from the podcast because ain't nobody perfect. Hello. You are watching an informative video to learn more about an English word. Perfect. P-E-R-F-E-C-T. Perfect. Definitions of perfect. Adjective. Having all the required or desirable elements, qualities, or characteristics as good as it is possible to be. Perfect.